In this video, we're going to take a look at an introduction to the Poisson distribution. Now, hopefully, you are familiar with two probability distributions already, those being the normal distribution and the binomial distribution, and we know those from A-level maths. Now, for A-level further maths, we do introduce some new probability distributions, and the first one that we introduce is the Poisson distribution. So, I guess the first thing to discuss here is when do we use the Poisson distribution? What is it good to model? and what conditions do we need? So in terms of what does it model, we typically look with a Poisson distribution over a given interval. So for example, we might be looking at say the number of cars that pass a checkpoint over a five minute interval, okay? We might look at say the number of spelling mistakes on a page of a newspaper or a magazine. Or we might be looking at the number of cars that come into a GP surgery per 15 minute interval, okay? So like you can see, there's quite a few different scenarios we could use to model the Poisson distribution, but we will always have an interval. Okay, now that interval doesn't have to be the same. It might be a five minute interval. It might be per page. It might be uh, per hour, per day. But like you can see, lots of different possibilities. Now those are usually given. However, you will later on in the course need to be able to manipulate those intervals. Okay, but we'll discuss that in a future video. You don't need to worry about that for now. So in terms of what conditions do we need here? So for the Poisson distribution to be a good model, then the events must occur independently, singly, and we say this is for in space or time, and at a constant average rate. Okay, so we need those conditions, or we need those, you know, the events to occur with those three conditions. So now let's take a look at the Poisson distribution and the formula that we use. So if x is a Poisson distribution, so hopefully this notation won't look too um, surprising. You should be familiar with this from A-level maths. So if I use x here to represent my Poisson distribution, so x follows a Poisson distribution. So hopefully you're familiar with this notation here. So we use PO to represent a Poisson distribution. And the parameter that we use here is the Greek letter lambda. Okay. And it'll look something like this. So the formula that we use here to get our probability, so if we want the probability of our random um, or our variable here, x being equal to a given value of x here, so just a value that we pick, then the formula that we use is e to the minus lambda, so e to the minus lambda times by lambda to the power of x, and this is all divided by x factorial, okay? So hopefully, the formula might look a little bit complicated, but hopefully there's no real new notation in here. Obviously, we've got factorial in the denominator. So, for example, remember factorial. If we've got 3 factorial, that would be 3 times 2 times 1. So, that's just the idea with a factorial. Obviously, 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So, hopefully, the factorial isn't new notation. You should be familiar with that, again, from A-level maths when we're looking at, say, the binomial expansion. Um, and you know, general probability problems. So that shouldn't be too surprising. E to the minus lambda times by lambda to the x. So again, E is just um, the irrational number E. Again, you should be familiar with from A level maths and lambda again is this value given in our Poisson distribution. Now, the values here for little x that we can pick must always be greater than or equal to zero. So we say x is zero, one, two, three, and so on. So we, we need this condition here. So x can't be minus 1, minus 2. It must always be greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, this is actually an infinite probability distribution. So what I'm saying here is the probability of my variable here, x being equal to little x, this must always be greater than 0 for any positive integer value of x. Okay. So basically, anything in this case. Now, it might seem obvious from the formula, but let's just make, make sure we note this here. Now, as x gets large, then the probabilities will get very small. And the reason for that is because obviously we've got this denominator here of x factorial. So as x keeps getting larger and larger in value, our denominator keeps getting, in that case then, larger and larger in value. But obviously because we're essentially dividing by a very large number, our probability, in this case, the result, will keep getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so like I said, that might be obvious from the formula, but it is important to note. Okay, so like I said, as x gets larger, then our probability will keep getting smaller and smaller. 
so that's important to know. And again, just like we were saying here, the way we read this is x has or follows a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. Now, this lambda here, um, the way we understand this is what we say is the parameter lambda in the Poisson distribution is the average number of times that the event will occur in a single interval. So that's what we mean by this um, concept of lambda here. And the one final thing that I want to put in this video is the mean and the variance of this distribution. So the expectation of x, our mean here, for our Poisson distribution, this is equal to lambda. And that might be obvious again from um, our distribution, but it is just lambda. And for the variance, of our probability here, so x to the Poisson distribution, distribution with parameter lambda, then the variance of x here is again just lambda. Okay, so obviously, once we've got the variance, we could then work out the standard deviation by taking the square root of the variance of x. Okay, but again, we're going to discuss these in more detail in a separate video, but I wanted to just give those so you've got those, um, you know, essentially covered in the introduction, but we will go into more detail in a later video. It's important to note here that I haven't actually shown the derivation of this formula here. We can prove this. It's not too bad of a result to prove. We just use um, the Maclaurin series. Um, so again, you should be familiar with that from A-level further maths. Um, and we can easily prove that result. And I will cover that in a separate video, but you don't need to know how to do it. You can use this um, result here um, without proving it in your course. So I'm not going to worry too much about that for now. Um, so unless you really want to see how it's done, then don't worry about that, okay? But other than that, that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're gonna take a look at how to use this formula here to calculate probabilities of a Poisson distribution.